about a year ago, I made a video showing how to use your Bufwang UV5R as a scanner. And after almost 1 million views and thousands of comments and many, many, many questions, because clearly in that video, I did not explain a few things as well as I could have. So in this video, I hope to redeem myself. But first, allow me to take a moment to refresh everyone's memory on some of the rules regarding using a Bufwang UV5R. Because if I do not very clearly explain these rules, some people will leave comments proclaiming that if we break any of the rules, we will go to prison or face large fines. And then they'll go posting comments all over Facebook or Reddit that I encourage the illegal use of the Bufwang UV5R, which is not accurate. So once again, I will quickly go over these rules regarding the use of the Bufwang UV5R, even though according to the FCC's own enforcement database, the FCC has virtually not enforced any of these rules since around 2012. Now, does this mean that you should break these rules? No. Does this mean that I am encouraging you to break these rules? No. Does this mean that I myself have personally broken these rules? Yes on an almost daily basis. And those rules go something like this. The Bufwang UV5R is a ham radio. And according to the FCC, in order to use a ham radio, thou must have a ham radio operator's license and thou may only transmit on ham radio frequencies. That means that according to the FCCs, you may not use a ham radio, such as the Bufwang UV5R, to transmit on GMRS frequencies, even if you have a GMRS license, or a ham license, or both. Nor may you use the Bufwang UV5R to transmit on GMRS frequencies, even if you have your license, and even if you set the radio to low power. And there are a few more rules, but nobody cares. But do not let your heart be troubled because everything I'm about to show you in this video is related to receiving only or listening only. So you can do everything that I'm about to show you with no license at all and with no fear of going to jail. The very first thing that one must be aware of when using the Bufwang UV5R as a scanner is that there are limitations on what you can listen to or what you can scan. This radio can only receive frequencies from about 65 my gigahertz to about 108 my gigahertz. That is the FM commercial radio range. And from around 130 my gigahertz up to about or around 500 my gigahertz. This will vary depending on when you purchased your UV5R, but that is the general ballpark range of what these radios can receive. And if you try to enter a frequency that the radio cannot receive, cancel. The sexy voice will just say cancel. Another limitation is that because this is an analog radio, it can only receive analog signals. So to answer many of the questions that many people asked on that previous video, you cannot use this radio to listen to the CB radio band in the United States. You cannot listen to air band and you cannot listen to DMR, P25, NXDN, TDMA, trunked encrypted, or any other kind of digital transmissions. Allow me to clarify, you may be able to enter the frequency that is using digital transmissions and the radio may receive those digital transmissions, but this radio cannot decode those transmissions. So all you will hear is machine gun static noise. Moving on, in the previous video I made about scanning using a UV5R, I only discussed scanning through saved channels. And a lot of people wanted to know if you can scan through a range of frequencies instead of preset channels. And the answer to that is yes. And it is very simple to do so. To scan through all of the frequencies, just make sure that your radio is in frequency mode by pressing the orange VFO MR button. This is the button that we use to switch between 
VFO or frequency mode and memory mode or channel mode. Channel mode. When you switch it between modes, the sexy voice will tell you what mode you're in. She just said we're in channel mode. As you can see by a channel number being indicated right there. So to scan through frequencies, we want to be sure that we are in frequency mode. Frequency mode. Then once in frequency mode, simply enter the frequency that you wish to begin scanning at. Four, six, eight, five, five, five. Then press and hold the star button, which you will see also says scan to begin scanning. The sexy voice will tell you that scanning has begun, and you will see that it is now scanning through the frequencies. And it is scanning in increments that you have entered in menu option one. Menu. So if we go to menu option one by pressing menu, and then pressing the up arrow key until we get to the flashing number one, frequency step. we will see that we are in the step menu setting, and the menu setting is currently at 5 kil jello hertz. That means that when the radio is scanning, it will increment or jump to the next frequency at a step of 5 kil jello hertz. A setting of 5 kil jello hertz is a good place to start. If you want the radio to move up in bigger increments as it scans, just change that to a higher number. As the radio is scanning, it will stop when it hears any signal that breaks the squelch. And since the squelch on these radios is not very good, you probably want that squelch setting pretty high. Otherwise, the scanning will stop for every sunspot and random cosmic ray that gets within one mile of you. So to set the squelch, simply press the menu button. Menu. Use the up or down arrow key to find the squelch menu setting. Press menu again. Wow and then use the up or down arrow key to increase or decrease your squelch value. I usually set mine to eight or nine, but if you're not hearing anything with that setting, you can try a lower number. If, as the radio is scanning, you thought you heard something, but you missed it, you can scan backwards by pressing the down arrow key. The radio will then begin scanning backwards or down in frequency instead of up. You can then press the up arrow key to resume scanning in the upward fashion. You can control what the radio does every time it picks up a signal with the scan resume option. That is menu option number 18. And there are three settings to choose from. TO, CO, and SE. TO, short for timeout, means when the radio hears something, it will stop and listen for a few seconds, and then no matter what, just continue on scanning. CO, short for carrier operation, means the scanning will stop when it hears something and hold there until the transmission ends and the radio will then continue on with its scan. SE, short for stupid example, means the radio will stop scanning when it hits something and it will just stay on that frequency, basically ending the scan. I use the CO setting that means the radio will stop and listen to what it hears and then continue scanning when the signal stops. And finally, the last question that everybody had was regarding skipping channels. Everybody wants to know if you're scanning through your saved channels, can you skip a channel? And the answer is yes. If you are in channel mode, channel mode. you can see that we are now in channel mode as indicated by the channel numbers. If you are in channel mode and you are scanning through your preset channels, there may come a time that you want to skip over a channel and not listen to it every time you scan, such as this very noisy channel. And you can set a channel to be skipped, but you cannot do it on the radio itself. The only way to set the radio to skip a channel while scanning is to connect the radio to your computer and use the Chirp software. You can then set the skip setting to S, which means skip. And when you save that back to the radio, the radio will then skip that channel anytime you scan through your channels. And the only way to add that channel back for scanning is to go back into Chirp and remove that S from the skip setting. This does not delete the channel. The channel is still there. 
This setting only makes the radio skip over that channel anytime you're scanning through your channels. And finally, at the beginning of this video, you and I talked about the rules regarding using the Bufwang UV5R. Remember, this is a ham radio, and by the way, I do not have a ham radio operator's license, and transmitting on this radio without a license would violate the FCC rules. And even worse, transmitting on a non-ham radio frequency without a ham radio license would violate those FCC rules even harder. And many people have asked what would happen if somebody broke both of those rules? What would it look like? So as you can see, this radio is powered on and set to a non-ham radio frequency. So let's see what would happen if I actually transmit on it. 